A middle schooler wakes up on a sunny spring day. He follows his usual routine of getting dressed and having the same breakfast he's been eating since he was nine. As he sat there, eating his cereal, he thought back to an idea he had when he was 11. It was a concept for his very own video game, a game about fighting and climbing through a massive tower with a first-person fast-paced style of combat. He'd recently delved into the world of Dark Souls weeks prior and was immediately enamored with the world and brutally difficult action-based gameplay. He liked the idea so much, he began working on the game. It's important to note that this kid has zero idea of what he's doing. He doesn't know anything about game design, development, art, stories, or god forbid level design. But what he does have is a lot of ambition and a fairly primitive knowledge of coding and computers as well as some 3D modeling experience. And so it was. This mere child was about to make an entire 3D video game that would forever change the landscape of indie gaming forever and take the world by storm. Except it's been about two weeks now, and all he has is a handful of sketches of enemies and levels on a piece of paper. Not to mention that he'd been slacking off on the modeling part of the project, and hadn't even made an in-engine prototype. I should also mention now that he's using Unity because he thought that was easy to use. It is now June 2021, about a month and a half since the previous project was formed and subsequently died. This boy was outside, modeling a mound of sand that was in his front yard. It was boiling hot outside, as the area he lived in was experiencing a heat dome weather phenomenon, where the heat and energy would get trapped in an atmospheric bubble that sat over the sky, probably caused by climate change, but we all know that's not real. The sand mixed with the temperatures in the cloudless sky created a desert-like environment that was so strong, the boy was inspired to make, take a guess, another video game. This one, however, was not nearly as ambitious as the previous. It was a 2D action game where the player would defend a big crystal in an open field. The combat was undefined, but the boy was sure that he could make something up when the time came. And so it was. Uphold was born. It was to be made in Unity and use a vector-based art style, as well as a camera angle of about 45 degrees from above, similar to Diablo. But this game was special. It was actually made and created, unlike the other miserable failure prior. Fast forward 9 months, and the game was a buggy mess, with unfinished combat and messy code but it looked kind of cool. The main reason for this is that the boy had no concrete idea for the game's combat and didn't fully understand the way Unity was supposed to be used. The result was death, and Uphold was put to rest, taken behind the shed and put down on June 4th, 2022. Uphold was 11 months old. Alright, let's see how Uphold works. Press space to dodge. I wow. Impeccable. Press E to pick up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember to press C. Remember. Okay, I'll remember that. Yeah, I'll definitely remember to fucking press C in the future. What? <laughs> this is beautiful. This is simply beautiful. You know, people don't appreciate the simplicity of art sometimes. Okay, well, it kind of looks nice. Like, I mean, it's it's yeah, it's kind of pleasing. Like the effects and stuff. Got a nice atmosphere. Alright, I guess I can build the defenses here. Build a wall. Construct myself from the outside world and never, never play it. Well, oh, okay. This is the world's greatest collision detection. Luckily, I remember how to play this game and I remember all the controls of everything. See, I can rotate everything. I still remember how to do that. That's T on the keyboard, by the way. And we can build uh, some factories to inflate the economy a bit more. Oh, here it comes. Oh, okay, and he's just phasing through the wall. Okay, and I'm gonna fight them. Yep, that's pretty cool though. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, I'm dead. Yep, this is a great fucking game. Good job. Good fucking job. Ooh. The chasm. Yeah, this is pretty. This is scary. I've already pissed my pants. There's piss all over the ground right now, guys. I like the sound effects, though. I like the reverb. I, did, I actually don't remember uh, the sound effects being this good. Is there a wall over here at the end of the map? Probably. I mean, I'd hope so. Oh, I, yeah, I don't think we're supposed to be back here. I think we should probably just leave now. Yeah. Constructing the fort that does absolutely nothing. Keep, keep, put some defenses on here. Yeah, just really reinforce it. Reinforce it against the, uh, the un undestructible jank. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Oh no, oh, yeah. That just looks like 
This is beautiful. I cannot describe, I cannot put this into words how beautiful this is. I am so impressed. As I said, Uphold was an unplayable and broken mess. What else did you expect from a middle high schooler? This kid was making and developing everything for the game by himself. He came up with all the ideas, wrote all the code, made all the music, and created all the art and assets. But what was terrible about the game is also what made it great. It was the greatest learning experience he had ever faced in his life, besides learning how to walk for the first time. But this kid now had the ability to create a new project that would outshine the last two. One day, the boy was sitting around in PE class at school. He watched as one of his peers swung a bat at an incoming ball. This granted him a new idea for a new game. Similar to baseball, this new gimmick was about reflecting projectiles back at enemies. The boy enjoyed it so much that he started work on another 3D game in Unity. He had multiple ideas for an art style, one based on Italian architecture or a cartoonish style similar to The Simpsons' hit and run. He chose the latter. I should mention now that this boy was quite a bold musician as well, and at the time played trombone in his school's jazz band. He now had everything to create a new project, gameplay ideas, an engine, an art style, and a good concept of the music. Weeks pass, and school transitions into summer break, which gives the boy two whole months of free time. Development is going smooth, and the prototype for the game is created in Unity, but the boy feels a deep dissatisfaction growing within. He feels a grudge towards the Unity engine, and wants to switch to something else. He had heard of a game framework named Monogame, which is a reboot of an old framework named XNA. Monogame has many benefits, such as using the same programming language as Unity, but most importantly, it gives developers complete control over everything they make. The boy moves his 3D project over to Monogame, turning it into a 2D game at the same time. He switches the art style from a cartoony, low-poly 3D style to pixel art, but the boy doesn't really know how to make pixel art. So he comes up with an ingenious idea. Create vector art, export it at a low resolution without anti-aliasing so you get that nice crispy pixely look, then add a layer of noise on top to add detail. The boy was now ready to re-begin development, but under a different name this time, Rastizer, named after Rasterizing. And after about two months, the boy gives up. The boy was now furious, beyond furious. He was so mad that one day he marched down to his basement and designed an entire puzzle game in just two days. After playing the infamous Fez earlier that summer, he was inspired by its cryptic puzzles and wanted to turn that whole concept into a game. But this time, he was beyond confident. He knew that making a puzzle game was far less work when it came to programming than an action game. And so it was. Again, that Glyphtice was born. Speed run time. Let's see how fast one high schooler can create a video game. Concept time, two days. Art development, one week. Music creation, 10 days. Programming, uh-oh. The boy was very proud of his music and art that he created, especially the music, which I recommend you listen to. Back camp link in the description. The boy was slowing down when it came to the programming and what he wanted to be a few weeks turned into a month and a half. But by November 2022, Glyph Tice was done and ready. If you haven't figured out who this boy is that I speak of by now, it's the voice that's been speaking to you this whole video. I've been a lone game developer for two years now and a player since I was a wee little boy. If you've seen my other videos on my channel, you'll know that I'm also a musician, though I normally allocate most of my time to creating games. Now after giving you that exposition dump, you can probably guess what the rest of this video is going to be about. A devlog on a new game. After creating glyph ties in my new framework named Triple S, or S, short for Sauce to Standard Structure, I created two new ideas for a game. The first, a story in a world driven puzzle game that takes place in a post apocalyptic world that was destroyed by an AI, where the player would traverse and sneak through a city run by robots and solve puzzles to escape while not being seen by said robots. The second, a puzzle game where the player would use a phone to activate and control things based off of the phone number on their phone. I chose the second, as I thought the first would be a boring sci-fi post-apocalyptic thriller that's been done a billion times before because I fear mediocrity. I got the idea from when I kept getting spam calls on my phone and had to block all calls for the day. That may seem like a minor occurrence, but it gave me the idea anyway. For the world and atmosphere, I was inspired by a couple of things. The boring and stale, I mean, wonderful and motivative environment of office complexes, the maze-like structure of the first Dark Souls game, and Portal 2 because it's just the best puzzle game ever made. 
All of this will probably and hopefully create a confusing labyrinthine world, which suits the story which I'll explain in the next paragraph. Based on the office idea from before, the story falls a German man diagnosed with schizophrenia but, but just just listen for a second, okay? I know mental illness has been done a billion times before in other video games, but just just listen, just calm down, lay down, sit down, just listen. The man's name is suitably Skits Man, not Shits Man, who works as an engineer for a secret government group in America named Elicitus. Elicitus is a group of other engineers, scientists, researchers, and lawyers who have all been tasked with coming up with an idea to solve the unemployment rates of the USA caused by AI. Skits goes arguably insane after joining the group due to the pure amount of stress put on him and starts to have delusions in other psychotic episodes. But amidst all that, he comes up with a design to solve Elicitus' problem. ARA2, later known as Arius, was a system where people would be put into cells where they'd be injected with natural and non-natural drugs to brainwash them. Oh no! I haven't even told you the name of the game yet! It's called Please Leave a Message, or PLAM for short, and it's named after the phone mechanic of course. On the technical side of things, PLAM is quite a setup from my previous projects that use monogame. Using SS, I've managed to create a more organized system for the game, which is just an all-around benefit. I've also created a brand new physics slash collision engine that works flawlessly, and it's also pretty lightweight on CPU usage. There's also a new lighting engine too, which looks fantastic, and I can also manipulate it and change it to get some crazy results. Now the rest of this section is about to get pretty technical, but I'm sure you can just follow along. Remember, if you hear any buzzwords or jargon that you may not be able to comprehend, lay back, put your fingers in your ears, and relax. My original plan for S was to use that as a DLL file dependency, but that proved to be quite a hardship as the framework was quite flawed at the start. I ended up just using it as a project dependency instead, so I can edit it on the fly. This just means that it's easier to edit code that otherwise could not have been edited as fast. My previous game, Glyph Heist, used a tile-based system for lighting, like Minecraft or Treya, where each block or tile is assigned a brightness. But for this game, every pixel is assigned a brightness using a thing called the inverse square law, which basically just means a light is dimmer the further away you are from it. Now this all may seem very cool to you, but one may be asking, how do you make a level with just code and no game engine whatsoever? Tiles. And tiled. Which is a kind of shitty software made by some Swedish guy or something. All it just does is allow me to paint a level using images or tiles, then save it as a file that I can write code to read and render on screen. As I mentioned before, I'm also a musician. I write, produce, and perform all of my pieces. For this game, I've come up with a simple lick, which is just an arpeggio on an augmented C major chord. It sounds very mysterious and dissonant, but oddly enough, has no tritones, but I guess that's just augmented chords. If you drown it in reverb and a couple of other effects, it creates a very hauntingly ambient tone, which is perfect for the game's world and atmosphere. Right now, I have a fairly clear development path for the game. As you can see on this lovely drawing, I'm currently situated at the engine demo phase, which just means to create an in-engine prototype of the game. Right now, I'm about halfway done, but in the next devlog, I should maybe potentially have the levels and some of the art done. But I honestly have no clue when the next devlog will be, and what the state of the game will look like. I've learned not to predict the future when it comes to these things, but that doesn't mean that I don't have a deadline or anything. I create little mental landmarks in my head that are close enough in time that I can get a good gauge of development time, which is enough to keep me on schedule. Keep in mind this is a free time project, but I almost treat it like a part time job just because it means that much to me. I'm just one young lad doing all this alone, which now when I step back and look at this, this is quite a feat. I'll be honest, I'm young and exploitable, especially now that I've put this on the internet, because when I hit that upload button, I'm basically signing an invisible contract that says, prepare to be roughed up a little bit. All I'm trying to say is, is that this is my greatest endeavor ever, so if this thing collapses, don't be surprised. For the future of the devlogs, expect another one in about two months from now. I might stream occasionally if this thing picks up at all, but the next devlog's gonna have development footage or footage of me programming or doing whatever. I don't really know how to end this video, so I guess I'll just hit the record.